Hey everybody, thank you so much for coming to our Financial Resilience Friday with Homeward. Today I'm really excited to introduce to you uh, Greg Harper, a very uh, valued and trusted partner we have at Green Path. They are a national nonprofit HUD housing certified um, and one of their services is debt management. Greg Harper himself is a HUD housing counselor and a certified credit counselor. So when folks come to me and they try to do some debt management and none of the DIY do-it-yourself plans work, I love to refer my clients to Green Path so that they can kind of look at the next step, which is sort of getting a little bit of help with their debt and you know, going, going to the places they need to go. So, hi, Greg, how are you doing? Doing well, thanks, it's a pleasure to be here. All right, so I, I know you're working really hard these days, and um, you know, a lot of our clients have been kind of calling in and sort of asking, what the heck is a debt management company? Yeah, we live in uh, challenging times and trying to help our clients navigate Kind of the um, the terrain out there has been difficult, but uh, but it's a good opportunity to really kind of share what the services that we provide. So as you mentioned, uh, Green Path is a HUD funded uh, nonprofit. We've been around since 1961, so we provide many services on behalf of our clients. One of which is debt management, and so specifically about debt management, there's a lot of confusion around what 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 is debt management. Yeah. And uh, so today what we're going to do is really kind of just visit a little bit about what we do. So debt management is where we work closely with the creditors. All right. So Green Path is under the umbrella of the National Foundation for Credit Counseling. So there are competitors out there that work with the creditors. And what we're talking about is credit card companies, Bank of America, Discover and Capital One and such. They work through companies like us to provide concessions to their clients. And so when we talk about concessions, what does that mean? Well, that means lowering the payment, lowering the interest, and then ultimately paying that debt off quicker than normal, okay? So there's pros and cons of a debt management plan. When we look to, to manage uh, that for uh, our clients, uh, let's talk about, well, let's talk about maybe the, the pros of that. Well, obviously people are coming to us uh, because they are struggling with their finances, maybe too high payments, too high interest. Uh, we're going to work with those creditors. Typically on a hardship, uh, we're able to, uh, to, to get that uh, payment down and then the, and drop the interest, not necessarily to zero, but pretty close. And so that's the benefit of our program. Okay. Yeah. A drawback, a drawback of our program would be that, uh, in lieu of those concessions, the creditors want concessions in return. They they want those accounts closed. So by closing those accounts, uh, that has a has a small impact on on credit, as you know. Yeah, and um, you know, Homeward has actually worked with Greg Harper throughout the years. We've probably worked with him 10 plus years. So he's our trusted local source. Now he used to work for a different company. Now he works for Green Path and they're more on a national basis. Um, but throughout those years, we've learned that Greg has not only helped, fo helped our clients um, with that debt when it became unmanageable, but also helped them rebound their credit. So if a client was gonna choose to work with you folks, and you know, help get their debt paid off. Could you talk about like how many years usually your average client pays off their debt and then how many years it takes for their credit score to rebound? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, first of all, when we, uh, when we visit with a client, what we do is really provide them with kind of an overview of all their options. So we meet them where they're at and we begin to kind of just uh, assess their situation. Uh, my job is to empower them with information so that they can make the right decision for themselves. Uh, but again, our uh, the debt management plan is no more than five years. So that's mandated by the creditors. So uh, the plan can be less than five years, but no more than five years. So that's something to keep in mind. And so that's where the creditors really look at um, what I tell clients is, hey, look at your statement. On the front, on the front statement, you'll see your minimum payment. You'll see your interest rate, and you'll see that if you make your minimum payment, you're going to pay that off well in advance of maybe 10, 15, 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. 
So our debt management plan brings that down to a manageable five years or less. That's a benefit. With the reduction in payment, then we're able to help the client if they're struggling with cash flow. And so we assess their situation. So in the event that the debt management plan is not a viable option because maybe their financial situation is such that they just can't handle that payment, then we have to go to plan B and we have to look at other options for them. I want to be very clear. We want to set somebody up to succeed. So we're never going to put somebody on a plan that won't, uh, that won't, you know, uh, out of the gate, try to look to be successful. Absolutely. And that's why it's so great to have you, Greg, because we've heard from creditors and even collection companies in town that they, if they're working with a client and you're involved, they absolutely will always generally accept your, your, your offers in that negotiation because they know you help Mm -hmm. the client make it to the end. And that's where the individual has a hard time, right? Is like, if it's a two year plan, that's a long time to make good on a, a, whatever the debt plan is. I'm just sort of curious, do you feel like there's a sweet spot of how many years a debt plan is that clients are most successful? Yeah, I think right out of the gate, if we're, if they are consistent with payments, three and a half to four and a half years is kind of a typical time frame. Mm -hmm. And because there are a lot of things that can change within that. So if somebody comes on a debt management today, we have to be flexible to kind of look at their situation a year from now. Has there been any changes to their situation? Do we need to pivot away from a debt management plan? Can the clients self administer the plan? Can they, you know, can we redirect them back to their financial institution and help there? You know, as an advisor, my job really is to continue to be their single point of contact as a counselor and to, on the big picture side to help with the, their goals. And that's one of the things that we do. Everything that we do, we take a holistic approach and it really is about their overall goals. So the debt management plan may be just one component of an overall strategy to get them to their, to their goals. Now, you mentioned um, credit. And we talk about a lot of people say, well, Greg, I don't want to close my accounts because that's going to hurt my credit. Well, what we share with them is that, yes, 15% of your FICO score is age of open accounts. And if you close accounts, especially if you close multiple accounts at once, that's going to have an impact. However, 30% of your FICO score is called utilization. And that's the relationship between balances and limits of credit credit cards. Mm. So when... When those accounts are closed on a debt management plan, the utilization still factors in. Mm. So if we're lowering payment and we're lowering interest, more of the payment is going to principal, then they are improving on that utilization while on the Mm. program. Mm. So actually their credit score will rebound, I, I would say, oftentimes quicker than if they were to trying to do it on their own, keeping those accounts open. That is fascinating. You've sort of said that to me in the past, but I didn't know the details. You just kind of laid it out there really well. So that's really fantastic. So just to be really clear to viewers and, and the clients, like generally where Homer comes in is we do some hardcore budgeting, money management counseling, and help you do the DIY debt plan, which um oftentimes can kind of save you some money in the long run but there's a group of folks where their finances are too stressful and so that's when we refer to greg and then you kind of look at them at at greg and and green path and you you look at them see if you can help um in which cases it sounds great it sounds like for a small fee monthly you help them with their debt if it's a debt management service um and then you can help them counsel them to get their credit back within a a recent short amount of time. I think in the past you've told me about two years is an average that you've worked with. Um, And and just to lay out for viewers, if Greg assesses you, and, and tell me if I have this right, Greg, if Greg assesses you and thinks you can do it on your own, he would send us back to, you know, tell folks to do it on their own. Or if they were too far along, then you would refer to a bankruptcy counselor. Is that basically the options kind of is like DIY going to a credit counselor Um, like you and then bankruptcy? Yes, but you leave out one, one item, one other, one other option is debt settlement. And Ah. um, although, uh aha, and and what we talk about, so although I don't, um, I don't recommend that anybody pay a company 
to uh, represent them in debt settlement. That doesn't mean that I don't think that debt settlement is an option. I do believe that debt settlement sometimes is an option. So in your in your example, we would talk to somebody and if they didn't have the, the uh, finances to support a debt management plan, and maybe for other reasons, maybe they weren't a good candidate for bankruptcy, we would look and say, well, listen, maybe what we wanna do is prioritize the mortgage, the rent, the living expenses, you're going to want to just maybe you know not pay your creditors for now simply uh, because we want to focus on on um, on housing and living expenses first and then let's take a look if things don't change then we can i help them self-administer that where they can contact uh, those uh, third parties down the road and to negotiate some type of settlement, which is paying them less than what they owe. I'm really glad you brought that up, Greg. You know, this stuff is really complex. And we always say in our videos that you're smarter than you think you are. So let's prove <laughs> it together. We always say that. So let's let's kind of talk about that a little bit with debt settlement companies. I have a feeling a lot of my clients are getting a lot of advertisements from debt settlement companies. How yes. can you tell the difference between a debt management company and a debt settlement company? And what are the things to watch out for? Right, right. Again, I think from the debt management standpoint, we are all under the umbrella of the National Foundation for Credit Counseling. So that's always something that a client will want to know. Oh, and again, we work with directly with the creditors. Now, a debt settlement company will will let their you know will let people know that they do work with creditors, but they really don't. And on that note, let's just talk about that. A creditor, if you don't pay a creditor, they're going to uh, charge off, and that charge off is a technical term that we use that says that if you don't make a payment for six to nine months they're basically going to wipe their their hands of your account. They're going to then sell the debt to a third party and that third party collector debt buyer is going to pursue collection on that account. That's where debt settlement people uh, come in and they try to negotiate with those third party collectors or buy debt buyers, mm -hmm. okay? But what happens is if those third party debt buyers, if they have license in the state that that client lives in, they can pursue legal, uh, legal action against them. And then they get a knock at the door, they get somebody serving them papers, and then, then they call up Freedom Debt Relief or any other debt settlement company, and those folks say, oh, I'm sorry, we're not attorneys, we can't help you. And that's where we have to pick up the pieces. So, so it's an under, so I'm, as I said, debt settlement for me is not that it's not necessarily not an option, but trying to hire a company that will uh, present themselves as um, maybe doing something that they're down the road probably not going to be able to do. I think just having clear expectations of that going in and um, and maybe visiting with uh, with somebody like me or with you to kind of give them context to what they're looking at to see if we can't help them do it on their own. Yeah, that's fantastic. So folks, if you've just listened to that and you feel like your head is spinning right now. Remember, mm -hmm. that's what we do in our financial skill building classes. We teach you what these words mean and how the complex financial systems world of your life works. So, you know, Greg just kind of laid out for there what I call falling into the crevasse of your debt and how a late payment becomes a collection and then becomes a judgment, which then can become uh, a garnishment or a lien or all those other things. So, you know, in my class, that's where I can help you learn, like learn what those words mean. I, what, what Greg is helping you is what, what's coming to my thought are two things. One, make sure you're going to a reputable company. There is um, the CFPB, which is the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau, is, is really trying to help consumers nationally by policing a lot of debt settlement companies that are verging on the line of making false promises and people aren't getting yep. what they think they're getting. So Greg's kind of talking about that, where you need to go to a reputable company. And so us at Homeward, that's where we recommend Green Path because they're a trusted relationship that we have with them and that's really good um and the and greg i saw you wanted to say something but secondly what i wanted to put in there is that in class i emphasize building your financial team i mean oh my gosh don't you want this guy greg harper on your financial team i always ask people who is your quarterback and 
Greg deals with debt, so hopefully Greg doesn't have to be your quarterback, but if you were struggling with debt, perhaps he would be just the best quarterback out there. So did you want to add something to that, Greg? Yeah, well, thank, thank you, Katie. I really appreciate that. But, you know, in terms of trying to empower our clients with information, we want them to gather information from other sources. And one of those sources would be the creditors themselves. So in fact, today, I had a client today that said, um, you know, in fact, I called Bank of America and they gave me your phone number. So, so that's a good way for them to validate of who, you know, who do the creditors work with. The creditors will absolutely tell the uh, client that they will not work with the debt settlement company. Here is a list of five companies that, that we do business with, Greenpath being one of them. Any of those other companies are doing the same work under the same guidelines. So they don't, there's no change in fee structure or what the concessions that the creditors will do. It, across the board, they're pretty, um, well, they're, they are. They're the same for everybody. Yeah, and if credit is a mystery to you viewers, then I would absolutely say having a certified credit counselor is someone you might want on your side if you're really concerned about your credit because it is a mystery. We teach it in my class and we do our best also to empower clients because that's where we can have the longest effect, where we're most interested in helping people. But you can see sometimes having a certified credit counselor like Greg Harper is so important. Greg, you and I are seeing clients every day and we're helping people through this situation. In my class a lot, I kind of mentioned that it matters if, if you're one of those folks who run out of cash and run out of options, it matters how you fall down the crevasse, meaning if you need to stay current on bills by using debt to do that, it matters how you do that. Would you have just any general advice for um, people's finances right now if there's somebody out there who's living paycheck to paycheck and now they don't have a paycheck and just any general advice out there? Well, you know, we live, live in strange times right now and I think crisis managing it right out of the get-go, making sure you're tapping into any resources and that's been pretty fluid in terms of what resources are available right now on a mm -hmm. national level, maybe on a local level in terms of what people can tap into. Again, I think the biggest thing is to validate people's emotions and to, to validate one's emotion. Uh, when I visit with people, we, we know that they're struggling. And my job is really to, to really go beyond the black and the white of the numbers and really uh, meet people where they're at and just to let them know that we're here for them and that we're going to give them all of our 13 years of experience to really uh, to visit with them and to let them know they're not defined by this situation, rather they'll be mm -hmm. defined by how they handle it, right? So for me, it's about, it's just uh, just being there, being on the team, you know, letting them know that we're on the team with them and that we're going to work with them and just try to help them uh, look into what they can do. But again, as to answer your question, uh, first and foremost, it's to uh, make sure that you have a roof over your head and food on the table. And, uh, and really prioritize, prioritize, prioritize. And from there, uh, we try to mitigate any, any uh, negative uh, consequences of credit or any of that. Uh, but we, we just, uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, take a look at what the resources are and, and try to just build a plan, a strategy, short-term, mid-term, and then ultimately long-term as to what we can do to help. And that's a part of the beautiful service that you you give to folks and that we help as well is just helping people have that two one year, two year, five year horizon of yeah. what are my decisions today? How are they going to affect um, those timelines? Because it's almost impossible to kind of understand that if you're a regular consumer. And that's where I think working with certified HUD housing counselors like us can really help that kind of um, thing. So you're making empowered decisions for your future. Absolutely. Oh, I know what my other thought was, was you mentioned using resources. Don't you wish, Greg, that um, there was some type of civics class in high school or something that would say, here are the social benefits or what do they call um, safety nets that are out there for you and here's when it's appropriate to use it and here's when you know you don't you get off of them or something i think people feel so guilty about seeing if they can use 
social services. And in fact, this is the time that it's appropriate to use those type of things, or even they feel guilty about using their emergency fund. No, I agree. I think that, um, you know, understanding that they don't have to do this um, all by themselves, that there, you know, there is resources out there uh, for you and I of uh, teaming up with clients to just uh, to be there to help facilitate uh, referrals to you know other resources and to do the best that we can uh, but just to let them know that they you know they don't have to try to to be so independent to try to do it on their own that they can tap into into those resources if it's short-term in nature great uh, they can always look into the future about giving back and paying it forward in another sense right uh, but at the time being, they always have to look at their situation and say, hey, I need to look and do what's best for, you know, for my family. So, Man, Greg, I feel like the years of your experience just are shining through right now. <laughs> you know, in our last second here, how um, I know you don't have it memorized. We'll put it up on the screen. But what what is the best way to contact you or Green Path to, if someone needs your services? Yeah, so um, you know, so I don't have a direct line. Um, I am here again in Missoula local, but anybody that w wants to get a hold of me, they can actually contact me at eight eight eight. Let me look at seven seven six six seven three five, and that's just a general number. And um, and then a they'll somebody will help them build a profile, and then that profile they can ask for me specifically as a as a counselor or they can get assistance right then. And I have wonderful colleagues that are there to help. And so I would just encourage anybody that, uh, that has any questions or just feel like, hey, I wanna, I wanna look into this a little bit more, you know, please do not, you know, don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you so much for your time, folks. Uh, Greg Harper with Green Path here is a fantastic resource um, to reach out to in this time. So thank you so much for your time, Greg. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me.